So this was one of the first things we shot for this game. Yep. There's so many characters here. We had to shoot this in multiple batches and then stitch it all together. I did several days just dancing. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah remember we, we brought a dance choreographer that spent some time with you, Shannon. Yeah. This was the demo, and so we had to, this was tricky because we're introducing to the world a lot of new characters with a lot of interesting dynamics and trying to do that through it. exposition, but as thin an exposition as possible because dear God, nobody oh, likes exposition. It was hard. What happened? This scene has jumped around all over the, as we're playing with the structure. It used to be in the very beginning, and then we felt we just had too many cutscenes in the beginning. We need to get to the action a little bit faster, and then we moved it to the end. We changed the writing for the beginning. She's uh, it's putting on quite the show. Um, but there's something kind of nice, and I guess there's, there's a, a, a tragedy to it of um, coming here at the end as a, as a memory. Of just seeing just Jesse's alive and Ellie and Dina are okay and no one's and there's Joel. Hey, what took you so long? Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> and this like really innocent first kiss. Hey, don't forget we're heading out early, so get some rest. Yes, sir. You're such a dick. Come on. And this was the first it. scene we shot. This was the first scene we shot after. You hired me. Yeah. How bad do I smell? My. Uh, I look at this and I'm just overwhelmed with all the details of the shirt, of sweat stains, of little hairs on the neck, um, little dimples on the smile, and just this is hundreds of people of work yep. for months mm. to get this little moment. Um, sweat uh, and, and trying to capture. The hair that I put behind her ear is crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that has to switch from being physics hair to being hand animated hair it's as crazy. soon as you make contact with it. Whoa. Not. And even just the kissing, like, I mean, it's just, it, it looks so realistic. Yeah, it's, and, and it it's does. actually a combination of several performances all stitched together right here. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the lighting has to change from shot to shot. It's interesting highlighting the bracelet that's back on Dina's hand. It's a nice, it's a nice, yeah, it's a, it's a nice reflective it. moment of like how innocent things were for all these characters. Yeah. I love just the little surprise on Ellie's face, the little like moment of shock before melting into it. <laughs> and then we're about to get into Seth. And I get <laughs> Shannon, the, the, your rage is so real <laughs> here. Hey. It's a family event. What the fuck are you looking at? Sorry. This whole interaction was based on one time I was at, at Blockbuster and I'm standing, I'm just talking to my R. friend, I'm, I'm throwing curse time words time around, around and the dad in front of me had his ladies. two kids and he's like, do you mind there's little kids around? And that always well, stuck with me. I felt such done. shame having like used curse words in front of these kids. What the fuck did you just say? Ellie, hey. Ellie, don't. Get the hell out of here. Get your hands off me. Hey, enough. Come on, you. Let's go for a walk. What about them? You worry about yourself. I feel so bad for Joel here. Ugh, me too. What is wrong with you? She doesn't want to be under his shadow anymore. No. And, but he can't help himself. He's just trying to. He's someone trying to. Is, dad. Someone is hurting her, and he's going to stand up for her. Oh, Papa Bear. Yeah, you know you were an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Saddest scene. Yeah, with the first game, right, we were talking about how um, how do you take this obsession of love, of a parent's love for a child, to the end of the line? And then this has the reverse of it, of like, how do you take hate to the end of the line? Which is also like another um, expression of love. And the engineering of it was that here she has this family that loves her, and it's not good enough. 
because she's letting down Joel in her mind. I love the different um, energies that you both bring to this scene where Dina is giving it her everything in this fight <laughs> and Ellie just has to shut down. The scene, my God. I, I was so hard to leave you because you were so upset and so broken and so sad. And I was like, I, 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 I should my, my mistake. I'm sorry. I would argue this is maybe Ellie's darkest moment, even though I know where we're going, because this is the, this is the choice where she forsakes. Yeah, this, is, this is where she makes the choice. Yeah. And I think she knows there's a very good chance she's going to die on this journey. I guess the thing that we don't talk about is like, I think she's suicidal. Yeah, I, I think I there's right there's the guilt of what the should have happened at the loud. hospital. That's why she yeah. leaves with, yeah. in the middle of the night. She's not saying goodbye because it's clearly suicide. Yeah. When the pain gets too loud, she's not there anymore. She's incredibly vulnerable, but she's completely disassociated. And there is this absolute rejection of everything that is right. I'm just supposed to. To sit here and wait for at you. that point, like, God you know you're not wrong, talking to the person that, that you're in the relationship with. Yeah, you're talking to the, you're talking to the grief. Joel. And so mm. it's like, the convincing comes into like, are you even in there anymore? Mm -hmm. Like, can you, can I just find you for one second? And she's just fully gone. Both characters have very clear goals. And then there's an obstacle. And then they keep ratcheting out, like Dina just, ups the ante over and over and over until right the last bit is ultimatum even the grabbing of the face and then like she pulls it's... her hands down Ugh. and that's it she knows um philosophically with this game what we wanted to do was allow our characters to make immoral choices that the audience would not be on board with up until now, like, we shed some of the audience of, like, you know, the Nora torture. Some people have issues with that or certain other kind of violent moments. But here we lose almost everybody. And it's, it is by design in that way of, like, you're now, like, playing this thing that you are not on board with at all. You have to keep going. And in a way, that does align you with Ellie. These shots are so gorgeous. Um, there's a nice misdirect coming up here. We, we, we purposely gave uh, Lev chucks. So you're thinking for a, a second that, oh, okay, this is where I pick up Ellie's journey. And again, now you've been a while away from Abby and Lev. And now Lev has fully shed his seraphite exterior. Has hair. I love to see their growth, their relationship in this moment. Okay, Constance. In letting go of hate, Abby has taken on the Owen's optimism, Owen's hope. Um, this thing that was just this flame that was almost completely extinguished within her. Somehow in all that tragedy and all that horror, she was able to find it again. Her face seems brighter, it seems lighter than it has been the entire game. Even in the flashbacks. Twenty-four, ten. It's not going to be on that side. It's all evens. Twenty-four, zero, nine. So twenty-four, twenty-five should be that way. Yeah. If the fireflies are still out there. Yeah. What do you think they're up to? I don't know. The goal was always to restore society. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to go about it. 2417, getting warmer. Oh, I hope not. I'm sweating already. Hey, something's out there.
Yes, you did. Keep your guard up. Let's go back to finding that house. 2425. That a boy. Seems like a strange place to find a resistance group. We had all sorts of outposts, big and small. Best way to hide from the army. Twenty-four, twenty-two. Really close now. Twenty-four, twenty-nine. Too far. That's not it. That's 24-26. Good eyes. Let's see. Looks abandoned, like all the other houses. Twenty-four, twenty-five, Constance. This is the place. Okay, but there's nothing here. We don't know that yet. Everything's empty. Yeah. That's the vibe I'm getting. Remember the last time we were in a pool? 
Okay, I have a small recollection of it. If it makes you feel better, I also thought we were gonna die. You being positive? I'm trying to be helpful. You're always helpful. Lev, I think we're done here. No, wait. You find something? Scratches. <laughs> Scooch. Unfortunately, I have to agree with you. Pretty nice barracks, all things considered. Is this frequency currently in use? This is... This is so small, is but I it? love... Oh, oh what? The hope, again, it's just like she has a bit of hope here, and then it, it's, turned, it's cranked up to 10 when she hears the fireflies on the other side of this radio. Can anyone hear me? And isn't the firefly on the other side of this radio another Vox Machina hero? Is it really? Yeah. Who is it? What's Liam O'Brien. Is it? Yeah. He was in. He was my fellow nurse, wasn't he? In the. In he the was. Yeah, we were fellow the two nurse nurses. in uh, Last of Us One. Is this frequency currently in use? This is Abby from Santa Barbara. Is anyone out there? There's a nice reaction here that Lev has to Abby's again, singular obsession of now finding the fireflies, and he's ready to give up. Can anyone hear me? Hello. Uh, and she keeps going in desperation. I love artistically how um, the character models for Lev and Yara were kind of a blend of both of the actors' faces because Hello. now I'm like looking at baby Lev, but I feel like you can see some spirit of, mm. of Yara still. Is this frequency currently in use? Hello, this is Abby from Santa Barbara. Can anyone hear me? If anyone can hear me, please reply. Please answer. 
don't give up. Like that, you know, this was perfectly shot, like we're pulling away from her, that this yeah. is how the scene's gonna end. Um. Um, 24, 25 constants. Uh, we got a tip about I don't know, base, I get, no I get weirdly emotional in this scene. Fireflies. I'm a, I'm a firefly. Maybe just seeing how happy she is. Where were you stationed? I was part of the Salt Lake outpost. Like the little head shake. I'm <laughs> okay, I'm kind of so awkward. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm a firefly. I kind of disavowed them, but Dr. Jerry that is who I truly am. He was my dad. Well, how about that? We pulled everyone back like to the Liam's satellite stations. acting right here, like in the reply. How about How that? Like, holy shit. 200 strong now, with a few more every month. Oh, no, right. You're about to get two more. How do we find you? It's, uh... Oh, God, yeah, that's there. There it is. <laughs> the large domed building in Avalon. We'll find you. Okay. Look at okay. like, the way Lev see, looks see. at her. He's happy for her. Looking forward to it. Good luck, Abby from Santa Barbara. What's well, also like? Over and out. There's a possibility of community here again. Yeah. Well, I'm sure everything's going to turn out fine for these two. <laughs> but it needs to, Neil. <laughs> okay. Fine. You were right. Uh, what was that? Why do you make me repeat whatever I'm wrong? Because it makes me feel better. And because it happens so rarely. by a new group, the Rattlers. The Rattlers are the worst people we've encountered in the game for um, both practical reasons, uh, which were, we want you to get to see Ellie at her most vicious, most violent. We want her kills to feel brutal and justified. And we want to feel like Abby and Lev, were they not saved, would have died. There's also, um, with this group, wanting to make them really awful, uh, to play a little bit with tropes and structure and misdirect the player, that in a lot of these stories, um, you have these two characters that you're rooting for against each other, and then there's a, a really evil force, and you see them team up, and they're going to work together to defeat the bad guys. And that's how, how this plays out at all. That always felt a little too cliché, and... I don't know if it really spoke to the themes of what we're trying to say here. But we wanted the player to think that's what's going to happen. It's a nice economy here of the storytelling. Like, you know, we don't show Abby arriving at Santa Barbara with this boat that has become a character of its own in the story. And we're just here with Ellie, picking up the tail end of their journey. Um, there's also like a really interesting note here from um, Abby. And it's also the first time we're seeing just how emaciated Ellie has become. And she's sunburned and um, clearly not taking care of herself in the pursuit of Abby. I mean, it, it mirrors the, it can't all be for nothing because She's killed so many people at this point. If she stops, that all is just for nothing. I, re I really like that, the parallel of the first game of like, yeah, her wanting to see things all the way through with her stubbornness, even though there's a part of her that says, this is not the right thing to do. How would she get up to the street from here? <gasps>
This looks promising. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Mesa Bluff. I'm here, and Santa Barbara proper is that way.
Hope I can cut through here. you. Gotta be a street around here. Okay. Santa Barbara's downhill. 24, 25, Constance. Come <laughs> on. 
She has to be down there. mirror here of the injury that Joel had mm -hmm. in the hospital in the first game. Uh, yeah, we're, we're constructing this. Uh, we wanted to s injure Ellie badly. So again, she's choosing the pursuit of this thing over her own health that she will likely die um, if she sees this all the way through. I would argue she is dead already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Doing this upside down hair was such a pain. Because um, essentially, you, you can't just move the hair upside down. You have to remodel the whole thing. And we wanted her to have lost so much blood. It's again, the whole thing is starting to feel like a fever dream. And it's, it, it's, she thinks she's seeing like Abby and Lev. And then realizes, oh no, it's we got a lot, boy. very different people. Travis and Logic. <laughs> this was um, another moment to show how far Ellie has come and how much how easier it is for her to kill someone in cold blood now versus the earlier parts of the story. And one more instance where she could use her superpower of being immune to get herself out of these jams. And what, actually what she's employing here is very similar to what Nora did to her, which is like try to insult them so they could get reckless, and in that recklessness, she'll find the opening. <laughs> Something funny? Looks like you show your pants. It's a good trick. I remember in this scene when I take the gun off of Bobby, the strap um, in one of the takes went across his neck, and I gave him a really bad rope burn. Oh, no. Because I just, like, yanked it really quickly, and... He had that for about a week. Oh no! It looked really, I was like, oh no! It looked like he was strangled or something. But he looked badass. Uh, he was yeah. so excited. It was like, it was like, oh my god, Ellie killed me. He was <laughs> yeah. such a fan oh, yeah, of the that's game. Right. He was excited. Um, I, I love how efficient that action is right there. I'm just grabbing the gun, spraying uh, across his legs. And watch this little smirk that you give when he points out your bite. Because he doesn't know you're immune. No one's immune. Kid with cuts by his mouth. 
Travis Willingham. Look at the, your face there. It's like the. It's like she's getting another hit of the, her drug. Of like, I'm actually back on the trail. She's so close, you can feel it. Watch this smile. Looks at the bite. Right. Talk. There. <laughs> she's in a holding cell at our camp. Where is that? Head that way till you hit the railroad track. That'll lead you to a resort. It's like, had this exchange happen earlier, if she killed someone in cold blood earlier, there'd be a very different reaction. It's like, she's becoming more and more like Joel at this point, more and more capable, and more and more cold about the violence, where she could just execute it and move on and not think twice about it. I think at this point, she's completely disassociated from the Ellie like we've ever known. staring him in the eye as he's dying. And just a hint that the injury is getting worse and worse. But again, she's not going to stop. She can't. Not yet. Tracks to resort. Tall round building. Tracks to resort. Tall round building. the area. Make sure he's the only one that got out. And watch out for infected. Yeah. I find out. Ah! Oh God! Okay. Fucking ambush! Spread out. Look around. Someone's out there. Great 